Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 114 Rides. Today we got a number of things we have to button up. Uh, did a little bit of work during the work week, not too much. We got our plug and pipe installed, which is the line that goes inside the car through the firewall into the engine bay. So in addition to that, we have to still install our soft line in between the clutch master and the clutch slave. We have a new master and I'll explain to you why we decided to go with the shorter version than the long in a little bit. We're gonna do a new hard line. This is just an example. We're gonna flare, bubble flare our own, and this is gonna come off the clutch slave. We have some wiring to install. This connects to the transmission. This is for your reverse lights. And what I did was I just took the existing and spliced in and made a new harness. And same thing, this is the brake switch. And then we used another brake switch for the clutch. And we made a little custom harness for this guy to go up so when you push the clutch in, you can start the car. Uh, if not, you have to jump that in the, uh, in the harness and uh, you don't have any clutch safety switch. So we're gonna try to make it uh, back to OEM. We have this line that goes into the master. We have our shifter assembly. I was showing you guys earlier, everything's cleaned up. Everything's lubricated. And yeah, a couple brackets. We have this bracket here that was holding the air conditioning dryer. Um, this was broken, looks like it was previously welded. Uh, and one, another one was completely missing. So we're gonna do a couple brackets for that. And then we have a couple brackets to make up for the clutch work. So uh, yeah, let me walk you guys around, kind of show you what's going on. All right, so the engine bay looks a little bit different. We pulled uh, the air box out, pulled a lot of components out. Um, and the reason being was to get the plug-in pipe through the firewall down here. And I'll show you guys what's going on underneath the car. Coming off the slave, we're gonna have a short hard line on a bracket, and then we're gonna have our soft line. And then this is the pipe we installed. This is called the plug-in pipe. This is the hard line that comes up next to the transmission over along the firewall and inside the car. Um, our master cylinder is going to hook directly up to this and it's going to get mounted to our pedal assembly right here as well as our switches that get sandwiched. I'll show you guys how we do that. We have this little rubber grommet right here that goes through our firewall to keep the moisture out and any road grime. Uh, we're going to cinch this up with uh, potentially some zip ties or some hold downs that I have. Uh, which means we might have to drill into the vehicle and make sure that that is rust proofed. So uh, let's get to installing some of the clutch lines and making some of the brackets and we'll get this system tightened up. Before we go any further, I wanna let you guys know that this hard line, the plug-in pipe, um, was one of the most difficult parts to install so far. Uh, we got it in, I thought I had it in wrong, we pulled it out, so we actually installed this part twice. Now, my car was manufactured in January of 1997 um, this plug-in pipe, which is the most readily available for your five-speed swap, is going to be for vehicles produced after May 1997, which means you're going to need the smaller master cylinder. Um, you have to replace a master cylinder anyway. Typically, the shorter version is, is a little less expensive than the larger version, so it works out. But just keep that in mind. I ran into an issue this week where my, my existing master cylinder wouldn't work with this pipe, and we had already put it in. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this cap off. You want to keep your caps on until your pipe is fully installed to keep any grime or debris out. And what we're going to do is we're going to thread our soft line on so we can see how long we have to make our custom hard line from the soft line over to there. Once we have our soft line mocked up and we kind of know where our plug-in pipe is going to go, more or less, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bend on it. And then we're going to take uh, some tie wire. This is readily available at Home Depot. It's used for tie and rebar together. It's in the masonry section. And then you can use pretty much anything to cut it, a set of pliers. I'm going to use my tin snips. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend this to give us a rough idea, one, of length, and two, how long we need this to be. So you just get this in a position, bend this up, and then I got my spot. I know I'm going to clip it here, and so we'll give it a little clip. Okay. 
Okay, and this is gonna be the rough template for our custom hard line. So the piece of tie wire we used as a template, we're gonna straighten this out as best we can. Get a marker. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark our cut. And I like to go just a little bit longer because we're gonna lose a little bit when we go to do these bubble flares. Now that we have the proper amount of line, we're gonna take our pipe cutter. We're gonna get this right in the center of our mark. We're gonna tighten it down. Making sure that we're in the notch on the rollers. Give it a good cinch. And you simply just roll it around. Once it frees up, give a little twist. You continue this process until you cut through your pipe, making a nice clean cut. Okay guys, once you get your cut all cleaned up, you're gonna wanna deburr it with your file. Just nice and lightly, just so there's no rough edges. We don't want any sharp edges on our bubble flare. Okay, one side good. So you can see some rough edges here that are left behind by our cutter. We're gonna take our file knock that down so when we go to make our bubble flare we don't have any sharp edges and we get a nice clean flare and that should do it this is our bubble flare tool we got it off Amazon and you're gonna find the appropriate size we're gonna go right here with the 4.75 just mock it up in there it comes with this tool and what you do is you use this tool to get the height that you need. So you want that that you want that flush. So right there is good. So we're going to go ahead and fold this over, and we're going to tighten this up. Now what we do is we fight, find the right die, make sure it fits, which it does, we're going to thread this right inside here. The kit comes with a number of sizes, you have to use which one is appropriate for the application. And the same tool you can use tighten it up just give it a little eighth of a turn <clears throat> this gets slid over here the key to this is making sure that you are coming in nice and square and what we're gonna do is we're slowly gonna turn nice and easy and this is crushing a pipe, simultaneously giving it a flare. Now, I wanna leave a little gap in between the tool itself and the clamp. I wanna see what this looks like. I wanna to try to replicate the original as best as possible. So it looks like we can put a little bit more on that. And we'll just leave a very slight gap. Okay. Get our bubble flares made. Okay, now that our flare is made, I'm gonna slide that guy on. And you can see that's a nice transition that's gonna fit perfect. And what we're gonna do is, before we flare the other side, we're gonna slide that guy on, and we're gonna repeat the process. All right guys, we got our bracket in, everything lines up perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten up this connection here. And then that'll make this nice and stable. So with the master cylinder inside the vehicle and this bracket, 
now our plug-in pipe is rock solid. It's not going anywhere and it won't flex under pressure. Um, so yeah, we're gonna tighten that up and then we are going to mock up our new hard line with the bends and then we may have to make one more bracket. Okay, so we have our custom hard line mounted into our slave. And then what we have here is just your simple pipe bender. And then we can, what we can do is we can kind of see where this is going and then we'll be able to bend our, our uh, custom hard line to meet this right here, this part of the soft line. So after tightening up the custom line that we made, um, I just determined that this was rigid enough in combination with this bracket right here. It looks like our soft line has nice clearance between the body of the car and the transmission, um, as well as coming up through the transmission into the firewall. So that should work out just perfect. Okay, so inside the engine bay, we were able to feed our return hose up through the firewall. This actually worked out perfect. Um, it usually gets stuck down here behind the brake master. Um, but we got lucky this time. It popped right through right by here, uh, right by the fuse box here. So what we have to do is we have to go ahead and we have to nip off the end of this guy. So we're gonna clean this up with a rag. We'll stuff a rag down there. We're gonna nip the end off and then we're gonna get this pipe into position so we can slide it right on top of there. We got the return hose on without a hitch. That just slides on. There's no need for any type of clamp. Um, we lost a drop of fluid. You just have to just keep in mind, you gotta slide that thing on as soon as you cut the nipple off. All right, the engine bay is reassembled. Um, we rerouted all the wires as close to factory as possible. Wiped everything down, found a little bit of rust down here. We hit it with some rust reformer, put some caulking over it. Blocked off these two nipples here on the throttle body. New hose clamp, there was never a hose clamp there. There was also some vacuum hoses that were no good that we addressed. So we're gonna give this engine a proper detail and change out the Vanos unit and clean all that up. But for the time being, just to get it on the road and test the five speed out, we're looking a lot cleaner than we were. You can kind of see what this side looks like. Just bad shape. That's kind of what we were working with over on the driver's side of the motor. So we're gonna jump inside now. We're gonna get the master cylinder hooked up and um, we're gonna bolt together the pedal assembly and bleed the clutch. This is the new master, this is the old master. This one works with the new plug-in pipe and it's made for cars made after May of 1997. And we're gonna put in this pipe right here and we're gonna throw that in the car right now. We got the master cylinder in, everything's plumbed up. You can see the two new bolts we put in. The bottom one is gonna be an extended bolt because we had to use a new master cylinder with this pedal assembly. So we're gonna do a 60 millimeter right there. And that one's gonna get a 75. And then that'll enable you to have enough length to install your two, your two switches for your brake and for your clutch. Clutch wiring is in. We routed it right here. You can see it right there. And we just popped it up there and left it hanging long so we could tie it into our harness. And that's going to be it for the day, guys. We'll catch you guys tomorrow.